What's up guys, Brennan Edwards here with Droner Tech brought to you by RemotePilot101.com and today we're going to be talking about the UAS pre-flight checklist. This is an important checklist for every single time you want to fly a small drone or a big one and so let's get into it because there's a lot to learn. So first of all, I want to talk to you guys about the day before because being a professional drone pilot or somebody who's very serious about this or even just a hobbyist, you start your prep the day before. And the things that you do on the checklist are first, you charge and check all of your batteries. And when I say check them, you want to look for any kind of signs of swelling or damage. And when I say all your batteries, I mean the flight controller, I mean the drone batteries themselves. If you're using any kind of tablets or a crystal sky or anything like that, you want to make sure all your batteries are charged and also you don't see any signs of swelling because that is a sign of a dangerous battery and you should not be using it. Up next, you want to ensure that all the software for all the pieces of equipment that you're using are up to date. And since we're using a lot of DJI drones, but there's other kind of drones as well, you have a lot of elements to that because the controller might have software, the batteries have software, you know, the drone itself has software, the tablets may have software. So you just want to power everything on and make sure that you don't get you know, connected to the internet if need be and make sure that every single thing is updated as far as it needs to go so that you don't have to be on set trying to figure that out or wherever you are trying to figure it out and you can't take off because some software doesn't agree with another. Up next is you want to take all of your props and make sure that they inspect them. You don't want to see any bending, you don't want to see any nicks, you don't want to see any like any breaks or anything. Any kind of problem you see with the prop, do not use it. The props are our literal wings in a sense. So make sure that they're safe, there's no damage on them, and if need be, replace it. So up next on the checklist is actually a calibration. It's called the IMU calibration. Now this is one that is optional because you don't always need to calibrate your IMU, but understand that your IMU is a hard reset for pretty much every sensor you have in the drone to be able to make sure that it is just ready to go, it's stable and it's doing all the things you want it to do and responsive in the way you want it to be. Now this takes a lot of time. So you don't want to be doing this the day of if you can avoid it. If you calibrate your gimbal, you get it up in the air and the drone still is drifting or doing things you don't want, that's typically when you calibrate the IMU. You. So I like to, be the day before, fly my drone, look at all the systems, make sure everything works, even if it's a very short flight, see how stable it is, see how good it feels, and if I notice anything off or feel any kind of weird way about it or I'm traveling to a faraway place, then typically I like to be in the place to calibrate the IMU. Let's say if I go to a different country, then I'll calibrate it there. But if I'm having trouble that day when I'm practicing with it, then I still calibrate it as well. So optional, depending on how much you've been flying your drone, but something to definitely think about. And last but not least, for the day before, you want to see if you can scout the location. And that will actually lead us into the next part, the location. So for the location, the first thing that's really important about where you're flying is making sure you're flying legally. So you need to check your Before You Fly app. That's an app that goes for Google, Android systems, as well as for Apple systems. This is a this is an app developed by the FAA, so you know it's going to give you the truth. It, it had its rough days back in the day, but lately it's been much, much, much better. I highly recommend it, and it'll tell you exactly if you're flying in a safe area or not. So I highly recommend checking that out. And if you do need to get some kind of authorization, then we actually made a separate video to be able to get certain types of authorization called the LAA and C or the Lance, and you can check it out on the other videos we made. At the location, this seems obvious, but sometimes you get in a rush and you're not thinking about it. You want to make sure you're looking that you have no overhead areas or restrictions. So when I say that, I'm thinking like trees, I'm thinking literally roofs, houses, anything that, you can, that, that can interfere, like wires of any type. And speaking of wires, another thing you should be really, really, really aware of is power lines. And anything else that's like a metal structure that can have a magnetic interference, because that can mess with your GPS. If your GPS starts getting messed up, then you can have the drone drifting or acting in ways that you're not used to having to deal with it. And that could either cause you to crash, not be able to get the shots you want. It's just not a good look. So in general, you don't want to fly next to power lines. Not necessarily because, oh, I'm scared I'm going to electrocute it. It's more so that power lines have a magnetic field around them. And the magnetic field can interfere with your magnetic compass which will just interfere with your flying and ain't fun when that happens, I promise you. So up next, you want to make sure that you estimate the minimum height that you can do a return to home. So typically what I do is I look at where my flight's going to be and I fly my drone pretty much where I'm going to go and get the, you know, on the practice course, on the practice run is what my team and I do. On the first practice run of whatever it is we're going to fly, we just see, okay, what was the height we were at? You know, how far above everything we, are we? How high do we need to be? And then you, you set, you can manually set the return to home height. So it's like, okay, the, tie, the tallest tree is only 
50 feet in this entire area that we're gonna be flying, then you can put it at, say, 65 feet as a return home height. Because otherwise, your return home height can be 300 feet, and it's just a huge waste of energy and battery energy for your drone to come back to go up that high. You also wanna make sure it's never too low because some of the drones don't have you know, sensors to be able to stop themselves, and then when it returns to home, if you lose signal, they'll literally just run straight into a tree, or whatever that is. So that's really important to set, and it's really important to make sure it's set accurately. Up next, obviously you guys know, unless you are one of the very few that has the waiver to fly over people, you wanna make sure that your flight path and what's going on is not gonna be having you flying over people. So inspect the area, take a moment before you take off, see if anybody just walks through the flight path that you're gonna be going on, and don't fly over them. And Or if not, coordinate with them, let people know you're flying, whatever that is, just do what you can to avoid flying over people because sometimes that can be challenging and illegal. And last but not least, at the location, you wanna make sure that the wind is within the manufacturer specs of what your drone can do. And there's a lot of different ways that you can check that. There's a lot of weather apps. You can just use weather.com. There's a bunch of drone apps that'll tell you the weather side of things. But either way, you should know, like if you get into a space and it feels kind of windy, and you're like, hmm, this is interesting. Typically, the wind up high is higher than the wind at the ground. And if you're feeling some wind on the ground, then you definitely should take out your aviation apps and check and see what is the, what the wind gonna be at? What speeds am I gonna be dealing with when I get up to my preferred flight height? Because obviously, the higher you are, the windier it may be, and the drone might not be set up to be able to handle that. So it's something that's very important to check before you go up. The next part of this list is for the day of. Like, what are you gonna do when you arrive to wherever you're gonna fly? First thing is, Again, to inspect the props for any kind of issue. I know I keep saying the props, but I'm telling you right now, you do not want to have a prop malfunction on you while you're in the air. Very closely look for micro fractures or cracks, any kind of bends, just look at your props and make sure that everything's cool. Speaking of a visual inspection, make sure that you inspect the entire craft itself. Specifically, you want to look at the motors themselves. All four of them, six of them, eight of them, however many there are, make sure you look at those very closely, make sure there's no cracks or anything that's going on there, especially with the connection points for the, uh, the props themselves. Just look at them, also turn those rotors and make sure that they all feel identical the way that they turn and how they turn manually when you're doing that with your hand. Up next, make sure that you ensure that your DJI app or whatever app you're using has an accurate return to home point. Now that's really important because you can't do that until you get your satellite lock, which normally doesn't happen until about 10 satellites are connected to your drone. But after that point, you can actually see what on the map in the corner, on the DJI app at least, it'll tell you exactly where your home point is. And if that's not matching up with what you are, where you are, the little blue dot, then you need to pretty much, I would power cycle the drone again and say, okay, let's try this one more time because that's not, it's not working the way it should. And if your uh, return to home point isn't where you are, then you lose connection to that drone, that's where it's gonna go and you didn't, set the return home, you didn't set the return to home height for that, and you also don't really know where that is. It could be landing on a house, it could be landing on top of a tree, all kind of things could be happening. So it's really important to ensure that your return to home point is the same as where you stand. If applicable, some drones have it, some don't, just make sure that you're gonna be in P flight mode, not S mode. S is sport mode, and for your first flight of the day, you normally don't wanna be in sport mode. Sport mode can be a lot of fun, and there's a lot of use for it, but typically you wanna just make sure you're in the correct flight mode. And that's the kind of thing that a pre-flight checklist is for. So I know I talked about on the day before calibrating the IMU. You don't normally wanna do that the day that you're gonna fly or do anything like that, but what you do wanna calibrate is your compass. Every time you fly, I highly recommend calibrating your compass, which is also called the spin dance, or at least that's what I call it, is where you calibrate your GPS compass. It's pretty much you spin the drone at about almost five feet in the air. You spin it horizontally, you spin it vertically. Um, it gives you instructions in the DJI, DJI app if you're using a DJI drone to be able to do that, but I recommend doing that before every single flight. On the day of the flight, make sure that when you're building your controller, you whip the antennas so that they are parallel to each other. The reason that you wanna have them be parallel is because that ensures that you're gonna have the greatest rece reception ability of those antennas because that's how they're intended to be. And last but definitely not least, if you, are, if you happen to be flying a camera drone, then there is a whole plethora of things that you need to understand about how, how the cameras work and how cameras work in general. That's literally math and science in, its, in itself. And we're gonna make a separate video about that. But what I'll give you right now are what my baseline ways that I do on my pre-flight -check, pre checklist to make sure I have everything that I need. The first thing is, is to format your SD card. You should always format your SD card before you fly just to ensure that you're gonna have no problems recording and that it was formatted in the same system that's gonna be used to record. So format it in the drone. Second of all is after you calibrate your gimbal to make sure that it's good and it's gonna stay steady, um, you wanna get the camera settings right. And those camera settings that I typically use, and these are just baseline settings, I almost always have an ND filter. Now which ND filter I have, again, a whole different ballgame. It just depends on how bright it is. Make sure your gimbal is off 
before you install any ND filters because that can mess up your, your gimbal calibration and you can get up in the air and you can have a jittery camera or a drifting camera simply because you were touching the camera while the gimbal is on and you have messed up the calibration. So if you're installing ND, turn off the drone, install the ND, and then turn it back on. So we'll leave that at that for now. I'm gonna make a whole separate video about that. But you should have ND on it if you're flying during the day at any point for the most part. I also typically shoot at 24 frames. That's just because I shoot for television and movies. That's the frame rate that's preferred in the United States for a lot of different projects. I typically have my camera set to manual mode and I have my shutter at 50 or 100. I keep my ISO at the natural levels, which is typically on a DJI drone 100. And for the color of the footage, depending on what I'm gonna do with it, for some, Normally I talk to, if I'm working on a production, I'll be in D-Cine-like or D-Log, depending on if they're gonna color it or not, or if I'm doing this for myself, or if I just somebody just doesn't wanna have to color the footage, then just have it in the normal mode. Also, your white balance, if it's a sunny day, you want it to be 5,600. If it's a cloudy day, you wanna bring it up, probably maybe closer to about 7,000. And if you happen to have a nighttime waiver and you're flying at night, then you wanna lower that down to about 3,200. And you know you can adjust that slightly based upon what it looks to the eye, but those are the baseline settings for all that. All right, droners, that's it. That's my pre-flight checklist. Let me know if there's anything that you guys do additionally to make sure that you guys are flying safe and getting all the kind of footage or whatever it is that you're flying to do. As always, you guys can check out more videos like what we did. This has been brought to you by Remote Pilot 101, and make sure you stay fly.